But first, this is one of the rare instances in which I have to go on Carving Up Live and admit I was wrong. I know it, it doesn't happen often, but, you know, there's the rare instances in which I gotta, I gotta call it the way I see it and call it the way it is. And I have to apologize to a certain quarterback because I have prided myself on, be it when guys come out of the draft or be it in the first year or two of their career, kind of be able to suss out uh, what they will be as, as a quarterback in the National Football League. I've prided myself on being relatively solid at that. In this instance, I um, thought I was winning the battle last year. I've officially lost, and I've come to, to surrender to those who have come at me for so long. I was wrong on Tua Tsunga by Loa. Point blank. So I'm sure you saw yesterday, the Miami Dolphins, they did not beat the Denver Broncos. They did not even dominate the Denver Broncos. They, well, frankly put, they, uh, they took the Denver to the woodshed, beat him up, took him out, gave him a breather, took him back in, beat him again. 70 to 20. That's a real score. This is not, it's funny, my sister actually texted me uh, late yesterday. She was watching the Packer game. I'll talk about Jordan Love later, but she was watching the Packer game. She texted me about the Dolphins score. She said, there's, there's no way this is real. I said, huh? No, it's, it's real. It's real. I think third most points ever scored in NFL history. Ten offensive touchdowns. Uh, ran for over 300. Passed for over 300. It was an unbelievable performance offensively by the Miami Dolphins. Once again, led by Tua Tagovailoa, who had a masterful afternoon. By the way, against the coach in Sean Payton. And I love Sean Payton. But against the coach in Sean Payton, who said a year ago on Fox that Teddy Bridgewater would replace Tua Tagovailoa at one point. And that's probably an opinion that I held, I would assume, a year ago. Tua, 23 of 26. That's only three incompletions, if you're counting. 309 yards. Four tutties. A QBR, no no turnovers, by the way. QBR of 89, shocked it wasn't higher. And a passer rating, the highest passer you can get is 158.3. Tua got 155.8. So darn near perfect. About as close to perfect as a quarterback could possibly play. Yeah, I was wrong on him. And what I love about Tua, I'll take the terrible towel off for the moment. I forgot to do that during the intro. I'll, I'll save it for, uh, for the Steelers game later. What I love about Tua is that, be it through improved coaching, be it through improved weapons, be it through an improved defense, improved offensive line, this year, running game, the guy gets better and better and better every year. Let's check the stats real quick. And again, the, the, the 2023, some of these are a small sample size. He's got eight touchdowns this year. But look at this, this improvement, He's gotten better every single year. So 2020 touchdown since 2020 his rookie year's touchdowns have gone up every season. You see he's only got 8 this year. That's obviously going to skyrocket assuming knock on what he stays healthy. Interceptions, two has never really been a high pick guy, so that's never been a problem. Only got two this year, so he should be fine there. Completion percentage from 64% to 69, back down to 60, 65, up to 71. This year, yards per attempt, and this is a big one, folks, 6.3 is rookie year, and then the following three years since, 6.8, then a pretty good jump to 8.9, to now 10.1 yards per attempt. Yards per game, 181 is rookie year, 204 is second year, 272 is, is third year, 341 this year. And passer rating, and this is the big one, this is like the quarterback stat. 87 passer in his rookie year to 90 to 105. Now to, if you round up, 122. Of course, he is the front runner to be the MVP of the league today, although given Patrick Mahomes' performance, albeit against the Bears' defense, he can make a strong case as well. There's plenty of other guys around the league that are playing excellent. That's your MVP as we sit here today, at least. And that guy is undeniably a top 10 quarterback, albeit, or not albeit, uh, potentially a top 6 to 7 quarterback. Accuracy improved. Arm strength improved. Uh, Tua has always been, he was more mobile at Alabama than he's been in the NFL. Some of that's injuries sustained at Alabama, most notably to his hip. But Tua has always been good at moving in and out of the pocket. Now he looks as comfortable as ever with the improved offensive line. I was wrong on this guy. And this is somebody, you know, take it from me. I was big on Tua in the 2020 draft. But I said I thought Herbert would be the better prospect than both him and Burrow because I just loved Herbert's intangibles, his tangibles in terms of size, arm strength, the whole bit. And I still love Herbert. Um, and then I kind of bought out of two after his first couple years in the league. Didn't love what I saw. And then here comes Mike McDaniel. Changes everything. 
And maybe I should have known that it was going to work. Maybe I should have looked past the fact that maybe he does. He doesn't look like the stereotypical NFL head coach. Maybe he looks a little nerdy, but yeah, nerdy works. <laughs> a lot of professions, coaching being one of them. And by the way, the team loves Mike McDaniel. And of course, you had Tyreek Hill. And again, what makes yesterday mind-blowing. Number 17, Jalen Waddle was not on the field yesterday. Jalen Waddle didn't play. He, he unfortunately had a concussion. Didn't play. And Tua still did what he did, albeit the Broncos are uh, proving themselves to be a clearly giving up 70 points, a bad defense. Tua didn't, I don't even think, played a single snap in the fourth quarter, understandably so. But this is, this is, you know, what you want to see from a quarterback year in, year out, the clear, consistent improvement year to year to year. Um, of course, the question for Tua is, can he stay healthy? Can he be ready uh, to go when the games really matter most? Last year, that was not the case. Again, knock on wood that he's able to stay healthy this year because I'm sorry, Miami is as big of a threat to Kansas City, who I still love as the favorite in the AFC. Miami is as big of a threat to them as any team, not in the AFC, in the National Football League, including San Francisco, including Philadelphia, definitely, and we'll get to Dallas later, including Dallas. They run the ball again. Miami's offensive numbers are ridiculous. So uh, Raheem Moster uh, had 82 yards, had three touchdowns, six yards of carry. You had the one guy, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Is it uh, Devon Akane? Akane, I think is how you say his last name. Had over 200 yards on 18 carries and two touchdowns. Dolphins ran for 350, passed for 376. Tyreek had a buck 57 receiving. Uh, Robbie Chosen, guys, changed his name a million times. He had a touchdown reception for 68 yards. I mean, what they, what they did to this Broncos defense, it, it's like it's like watching Ohio State against Cornbread State. It's unbelievable. And and what you know, a lot of people are crushing Denver today. I'll touch on Denver briefly in just a second. Sean Payton and Russ in particular. Obviously, most defenses in the history of the National Football League, don't give up 70. I think this is only the fourth instance in which somebody has scored 70, if I'm not mistaken. But some of this is Miami's got a lot of diversity in their offense in terms of how they can beat you over the top, beat you in the short game, beat you in the run game, beat you up front in the offensive line. So a group that I, I didn't come up with this nickname, but I've certainly referred to this group as two and on. <laughs> come at me, okay? You, you've you got every right to come at me today. I'm not going to say I'm on your side because I'm not as crazy about two as, as some of you out there are, but I was wrong in this guy. Listen, this is a rare instance. I, it's a rare instance I come on my show and admit I was wrong about a quarterback, but I can't deny what I'm watching. I can't deny what the film shows, and I can't deny what the uh, the progress that two has made. By the way, this is one of those instances. On, on, I'm not just saying this just because I'm admitting I'm wrong. Honest to God, I'm glad I was wrong on this one. Because Tua, to me, is one of the, we'll talk about Matt Jones a little later, Tua, to me, is one of the easiest quarterbacks, easiest athletes to root for, comes from a great family, has dealt with adversity, injuries, uh, really mature. Um, you know, personally, that this that this is a, just a personal thing. He's uh, a man of faith. Uh, he seems like a great teammate, great guy. Again, as I, as I mentioned, as I showed the stats, he gets better every year. Tua is a really easy guy to root for. So if there's any quarterback I'm going to be wrong about, I'm glad it's this man. I really am. So props of a dolphin. Props of a dolphins. I'm I'm sorry. Let's uh I'm sitting in a chair, but uh, you know, screw it. Let's uh let's give a standing ovation to the Miami Dolphins for what they did yesterday. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 70. Holy smokes. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.